welcome to another episode of the Digital Tutor Spotlight. The Digital Tutor brings the great teachers of the world into your home, church, or Christian school to provide private e-tutoring to your students, teaching math, social studies, language arts, science, Bible, and elective subjects. The Digital Tutor is designed to help fathers obey God's command in Ephesians 6, 4 to bring up their children in the training and instruction of the Lord. And now let's watch some clips from one of the instructional films that comes with the Digital Tutor Lessons Library, which you can purchase from the online store at thedigitaltutor.com. You're watching Captain Brett's Christian Movie Show. A couple of weeks ago, I became an aunt for the very first time. My brother, who is our director of photography, and his lovely wife Katie had their first child. He was born here at our house in my dad's bedroom, which seemed to be the most comfortable place to have a baby. Many of my dear friends have recently married and are now expecting their first baby, and Katie wanted an opportunity to share with them her first-hand experiences with a completely natural home birth. I wanted to share some things on my heart about, about having uh, little Brett here, yeah, he's such a joy to us, and uh, and of course he was our first baby, and and uh, we were so excited, looking forward to him coming and all, and and I was just thinking about um, what a joy it is, and and I was thinking about Crescent and Kelly and and Stephanie and so many other young ladies that I know that that have gotten married and that are looking forward to children and. And, um, and I'm so excited with them and I just wanted to share some things that, that helped me as I was going through my first labor and um, delivery and all. And one thing that really helped me was to, to, to uh, remember the ladies who have gone before us as, as Christian women. I was thinking about my, my own mother and, and um, and other ladies in history who have trusted the Lord. You know, to bring a little baby into the world is such a special, precious privilege f for us as women. And, uh, and I was thinking about um, how the Lord is the one who gives babies. And the Lord's the one who, who, who said that they're, the, uh, that they're a blessing. And I got to see that they are a blessing in a special way that I never have before. And um, I was thinking about um, the scripture. It says that that a, that a woman will be saved through childbearing if she if she continues in love, and faith, and sanctity with self restraint. And one thing that really encouraged me watching my mom as she walked through the childbirth process with my brothers and sisters and I um, was was the way that she trusted the Lord because you know the Lord is is the one that gives us the strength that we need every day for whatever he has for us to do and um, and I, I watched my mom have self-restraint and and to fix her eyes on the Lord and hope in the Lord and trust in the Lord as she brought the little ones into the world and that just encourages me so much I think about the lady on the Mayflower who had a baby on the boat coming over to America and I think about um, Sarah in the Bible, who was an older lady, and she trusted in God, and she hoped in God, and God brought forth her baby in wholeness and health. Well, we came up to visit the Smith family in Griffin, to visit Katie and the family, um, and Katie's water broke Saturday night. And so we got to be here for the birth of little Brett. And the timing was... Um, Really, we thought it was the Lord's timing that we would have come that weekend and um, got to be here for the birth. And Katie had wanted me to be with her in the birth just to encourage her. Um, there was a wonderfully competent midwife who was going to be here to direct the uh, birth, but I was just going to be her. A little bit of an encouragement to her, and so it worked out really well that I was able to, to be here. One thing I would want to encourage um, other young mothers with is that the um, the Lord the Lord um, designed our bodies to bring forth babies? It's a good 
thing. It's not something to be afraid of or, or scared of. The Bible says that he, the Lord has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and a sound mind. And as we trust in the Lord and as we hope in the Lord, then he'll bring forth little babies and, and, and little people for his glory, and he'll give us the strength to do it no matter what. Katie's first birth was, compared to mine, I think much better. Um, of course, my first birth resulted in Katie, so I just think it's wonderful. But um, we did not know what we were about, and so we went to the hospital, and they um, gave me Pitocin and rushed things around. And um, any lady who has had Pitocin knows that um, it produces a, a falsely hurried labor with no rest periods, and it's just uh, very, very stressful and quite painful. I would encourage people to consider a, a you know, letting God direct the delivery, the time of it, because it, nothing was gained by rushing, and it was it hurt just as, you know, it still hurt, and so I, I think Katie's delivery, though longer than mine, um, mine was equally, well, not equally uncomfortable, but the, her labor was just better. I, I saw, and I've experienced this in some of my other labors too. It, there's actually a wonderfully and very deep spiritual side to birth that I saw Katie go through, and I know I've been through myself. I've had five hospital deliveries myself and, and seven at home, and the, the home births are um, much preferable to me, and I certainly encourage people to have a competent midwife with them. That is such a blessing to have someone with them. And, um, but you, you can go, your body can go at its own pace. God will direct your body at its own pace. He'll give you times of, of rest. And then when it's time to push, oh, it's just so exciting, you know, and you get to push. And it's much preferable to all the monitors they used to strap on me. And I had to labor in very uncomfortable positions, couldn't walk around. It's just, um, while I appreciate all the things that hospitals have to deal with, I'm just having a baby, and I don't have to, you know, their problems don't have to become my problems, if you know what I mean. I, um, it's just when you stay at home with a good midwife and your husband, it is a joyful thing, and the whole family's waiting outside the door to hear the exciting news, and it's just a wonderful experience rather than um, something that you have not enjoyed so much. How would you like to spend some time getting to know other families who are interested in Christian education? Then host an E64 showcase party. It's easy and fun. All you have to do is open your living room on a Tuesday night at 6.30 for a few families to come and watch the E64 showcase on your TV. And maybe you want to offer some popcorn and soda. After the show, we'll do a live demonstration of the E64 software. Call Captain Brett at 678-570-2195 to set it up. I'm the father of 12 children. Uh, my wife and I had our first child uh, 23 years ago. And uh, we had our child in the hospital. And I didn't know anything about childbirth much. I, I went to the natural childbirth classes and uh, uh, gave, they gave me instructions of what to do. But when we went in, we actually went in too early. We should have been more patient and waiting for her contractions to do more work and ended up being a very trying time for us with our first child. And one of my concerns is the first child of those um, who are having, having babies. Uh, the first child seems to be a little bit more difficult for ladies to, to have. My real concern is that, <clears throat> that as uh, our, our children, our daughters begin to have children, that they would not uh, begin a labor period and, and then kind of give up on it and go to the hospital and many times it would be a traumatic experience and, and that they might have a c-section done or, or Pitocin, a lot of anxiety and things like that. But I'd love to encourage our young ladies uh, to get a realistic view toward the first child in that it may take longer to have a longer labor time than than you may expect. When I was in labor with, with her um, over 20 years ago, 
I got very tired and things had gone on for a long time and they were talking about giving me a cesarean section and um, we didn't want to do that because we knew it caused complications for future deliveries and so we just we wanted to have the baby um, vaginally and I think that if Katie had been in a hospital setting going on 39 hours of labor I think at some point in there at 25 hours or 14 hours or something somebody would have done like they did with me start talking c-section you know and um but there was no need. What was needed was patience there. And I remember one time in the middle of the labor, Katie looked up at me with tears streaming down her face, and she said, Mama, how long is this going to go? And I said, Baby, I, I can't tell you that. I don't know. But the Lord knows, and He is faithful. And when, when you're finished, and I do not know when that will be, 30 minutes, five more hours, I don't know. But... Do you remember when you used to ask me, when am I going to be able to get married, Mama? When Do you think the Lord's going to have a husband for me? And I was like, baby, I don't know. It could be next year. It could be 10 years from now. But God is faithful to bring you a husband when He wants you to have one. And in the same way, no, I couldn't tell her how long it would be over. But we kind of smiled at each other because we think her uh, wait for a wonderful husband was well worth the wait. He's just a wonderful husband to her. And we knew that little Brit would be worth the wait also. Would you like for your family, your business, or your church to be featured on an episode of E6 for Showcase? Then give us a call at 678-570-2195 to discuss things we can do together to promote Christian education in our community. And have your family, your business, or your church featured on the show. Katie. Uh, she labored for 39 and a half hours, 39 and a half hours, my daughter, Katie. And um, by the grace of the Lord, she was able to uh, go through that. And uh, the baby came forth healthy, and, and she came forth healthy. And uh, the baby doesn't have a lot of tubes sticking out of its mouth or ears or anything. It, uh, she's now able to nurse the baby and care for the baby. And the baby's right here in the home with uh, all of uh, the family. And we're all able to hold the little baby. His name, his name is uh, uh, Brett. Um, but <clears throat> our hospitals in recent years have begun to be more uh, aggressive, you might say, in, in childbirth. And, uh, you know, if things don't proceed on pretty quickly, possibly because of liability cases and things like that, they have been more careful. And uh, so they, they might quickly give a C-section to, to our daughters as, as they go into labor after a period of time, not wanting to be held liable or for other reasons. And uh, it's just something, uh, and once a lady has a cesarean operation or C-section, uh, it, uh, you know, it may, it may cause them to, you know, the experience can really be discouraging possibly. And uh, I want to avoid that if possible. And uh, encouraging our ladies to have a successful first birth. Because after that, normally it's not as difficult uh, for them to have the baby after the, after the first birth. Um, <clears throat> one of the things I believe that will help is uh, to get a realistic view on how long labor can be. Um, you know, a, a, as uh, Katie went into this uh, birth, uh, she may have not anticipated it was going to take as long. And I talked to her midwife, and her midwife anticipated from 12 to 24 hours, and I remember my mother telling me with her first baby, she, she labored in the home. She was, my oldest sister was born in the home many years ago, 70-something years ago. And uh, uh, my mother labored 20 hours. And so I think when it began to go a uh, fairly good time, it was probably a, a discouraging thing for Katie to say, well, what's going on here? It's taking so long. But I believe with the first child, we need to anticipate longer labors. And... Uh, particularly if we're not going to be in a place where the doctor can give us Pitocin or, um, or you know, do a C-section. One trouble that a lot of girls have with their first birth is they get tired. They just wear out and they just get frantic and they've never done it before and get upset and all. And so, um, you know, uh, sometimes I did feel real tired, 
but um, what, what really helped me was to rest between contractions. And you can't really sleep, and, you, and laying down was not comfortable. And so um, one thing that helped me was to rest my heart and to rest my, my soul and to, um, and to just, just uh, focus on the Lord and remember scriptures. And Alan was so wonderful. He would, uh, he would sing me songs and read me the Bible. And he would um, tell me stories about when he was a little boy. And, and uh, it was really a blessing also. It, my whole body was able to rest and relax more in, in uh, a warm shower or bath to, uh, to let my muscles relax. And that was a blessing. But um, the main thing is is that, that we have to keep our eyes on the Lord. And, um, you know, as women, we're, when, we have, when we have a little one and we, we trust in the Lord, um, the Lord uses our bodies as instruments to bring new life into the world. And that is such, a, such an honor and a blessing. And, um, and I remember at one point I was laboring and, uh, and um, I, 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 remember, I realized that I had sin in my heart about something and I confessed it to the Lord and I confessed it to Alan and I repented of it. And, um, and that was a real blessing to be able to, to, uh, have, to have a right heart before the Lord because I believe that's very important. Do you have friends in your church, homeschool support group, or civic club who would benefit from learning how to earn income from a home business? Then call Captain Brett to schedule a home business video workshop. This workshop features video instruction from Ray Perry, homeschooling mother of seven entrepreneurs and the founder of Educating for Success, the online community designed to bring families together with home business. In this workshop, you will hear the amazing story of how Ray's son, Drew, at age 17, brought his dad home from his corporate job by developing a real estate portfolio. You will learn the 10 keys to success in becoming an entrepreneurial family. You will learn the three types of genius your children may possess and how to leverage that into profitability. You will learn about the eight different kinds of intelligence, six of which are never tested for or developed in the government school system, and how all of them can be used to generate income. You will learn how to build a winning team and take responsibility for the education of your family. And finally, there will be over two hours of specific instruction on how to start and run 10 different online businesses, including administrative virtual assistant, search engine optimization expert, social media expert, creating membership websites, website content manager, online bookkeeping, and more. This life-changing workshop will be hosted by Captain Brett and can be scheduled for your church, homeschool support group, or civic club for only $20 per family. Opportunity is knocking. Open the door today by calling the Homeschool Advantage at 678-570-2195. I'm very glad she was at home with her husband and, and her family around her and a uh, a competent midwife who could who could just encourage her to be patient and wait and work through the things. I wouldn't take anything in the world for the memories I have of the times when I would be in labor and I would just be crying out to the Lord to help me. And you know, God visits a woman who's in labor in a special way, and I wouldn't miss I wouldn't miss that for anything in the world. And I wouldn't miss the memory. I wouldn't have Katie have missed those memories. For anything as difficult as they were, as costly as they were to her, she now holds in her heart and mind sweet memories of, of a mother's encouragement, of her husband going through every contraction with her. And he didn't know when they were going to end either. He just took it one contraction at a time. He stroked her face. He talked to her. He rubbed her back. He practically got in the shower with her, just had his head in there with her, stroking her, you know, just loving on her, trying to help her and encourage her any way he could. And he just, he held her, he encouraged her. He was right in there for 39 and a half hours. Her husband walked her through that thing. And that bonds them. I'm sure that, I know it did, Michael and I, it bonds you together in, a, in another sweet, precious way that uh, 
frankly, when you're in the hospital, the husband kind of gets shoved to the side just a little bit, and there's not a whole lot of bonding going on between the husband and the wife because the husband's just a fixture over there on the side of the room. And so I'm so glad that Katie, even though it, I was supposed to be in there encouraging her, and every time I would try to speak to her, my voice would just, I'd tear up and I couldn't get halfway through a sentence before I'd be all choked up. But um, still, I wouldn't take anything for her having that, oh, that deep bonding with her husband and the faithfulness that he showed. He wouldn't have had that opportunity to show that faithfulness to her if he had been in a setting where he was just off to the side. But he was right there in the middle of it, and um, I'm so glad they, they were able to do that. A lot of us have grown up watching movies where, you know, the mother will have a baby and she looks like she's dying, you know, and she's uh, all upset and screaming and hollering and everything. But, but the Lord wants us to have self-restraint. He wants us to, to trust Him and keep our eyes on Him. And, um, and you know, there's, there is pain in it and there is, uh, sometimes there's long suffering. But when you get to the end and the Lord brings about the delivery, it's so wonderful because you get to hold the little one in your arms. And um, when it's all said and done, a baby's really, people are the only people, thing you can take to heaven with you. During the delivery, I, I was blessed to be able to be here the whole time. I was able to encourage Katie to pace herself and not to be anxious. I encouraged her to, to try to steer away from being anxious at all, but to take full advantage of the time in between contractions to rest and try her best to relax, not only physically, but, but uh, uh, in her heart, just to, to let the peace of the Lord be there. Um, and to anticipate it may take longer than, than we think, and not to get in, in too big a hurry. And, uh, so it, it was a, a lengthy uh, period of time. But the Lord, when it's all said and done, of course we were praying for her and singing to her, and, and her, her husband was very faithful to be right there beside her the whole time, and encouraging her and massaging her shoulders or whatever she might think would help her uh, during this time. And... Uh, I know that was an encouragement to her in one way, but in another way it may have put her under pressure <laughs> having so many people here expecting her to produce. I think maybe also we as parents and families need to consider that as well, that when we come to a birth, a home birth, that we need to be patient and, and, and not to put, put our children under any pressure that they've got to produce. And uh, just to pray and uh, sing or whatever, whatever it might would minister to uh, our daughters. Before you go into labor, you have contractions through your pregnancy called Braxton Hicks contractions. And that's just where your muscle is, is exercising itself and preparing for birth. And it just feels like you're contracting the muscle in your arm, say, for instance, and it doesn't hurt. But you say, oh, but your tummy firms up and you say, oh, this is a contraction, you know. But, but uh, you know, and then the first part of labor, they, uh, they're more... Um, more intense, but they're not real. They're not real painful, you know. And I'd encourage girls to uh, to just, you know, pace yourself. The film you just watched is one of the hundreds of films that are a part of the E64 Educational Library. E64 is a computerized curriculum that combines video instruction, text-based instruction, music, computerized testing, competitions, games and more to create a unique tool for learning. Just a few of the ways that E64 is being used around the world include a homeschool curriculum for parents who want to give their children a strong biblical worldview education, a Christian school curriculum for learning to read, math, science, history, and Bible studies, a family integrated Sunday school curriculum for churches that are moving towards a more biblical family integrated model a tool for fathers to do family worship in their homes, and a tool for church leaders to train their men to be strong spiritual leaders in their homes. The E64 library is currently over 35 gigabytes of instructional material and can be purchased on a handy flash drive by going to the website at e6-4.com. Give us a call if you would like for someone to come to your church, homeschool group, business, or other organization to do a live demonstration of the software. 
If you are a strong supporter of Christian education, then you may want to consider becoming an E64 distributor. We can provide you with the tools and training to start your own home business as an education consultant. Ephesians 6.4 commands fathers to bring their children up in the training and instruction of the Lord. For fathers who want to obey this command, there's no better tool than E6.4. Are you looking for a family integrated church that follows the regulations for worship found in 1 Corinthians? Then come and worship with the fellowship of the Father. We don't have programs that divide families, rather families worship together and our elders make themselves available to disciple men in how to become strong spiritual leaders in their homes. We don't spend our tithes money on big mortgages or big salaries. Instead, we worship in homes and our elders are all bivocational. To read our fundamentals of fellowship or other information, visit our website at fellowshipofthefather.org. To visit us for Sunday worship or weekday breakfast and Bible study, give us a call at 678-570-2195. Hi, my name is Bethany, and this is my mother Jacqueline. Tell us what you're doing today, Mom. I'm working in the office today. I have about four hours worth of work to do to finish up our income taxes for the year and get them in the mail. And since the children are a great interruption to that process, making it virtually impossible to finish, Madi is going to be supervising their schoolwork today for me, and they're all forbidden to come in the office. <laughs> <laughs> so the children are on their own. What are they doing? Does today have to be a non-school day? Not at all, because we use E64. Let's start in the den and see what the children are doing. We have three laptop computers set up here in the den. Let's visit with Sutara first. Hi, Sutara. Why don't you tell us what you're working on today? I'm working on E64 math. Wow. So what other things can you do with E64? English, history, science, and Bible studies. That's neat. So how do you know what lesson you're supposed to be working on? I don't have to know. I just log in with my name, and the program goes right to the lesson where I'm supposed to be. And if I stop in the middle of a lesson, when I sign back in, it remembers where I was. That's great. Let's go take a look at what Madison and Gavito are doing. Hi, boys. What are you all working on today? Learning to read. What are you reading about? No, I'm the ark. It's so cool. Look, here's all the animals coming out of the ark. That is cool. Hi, Wally. What are you working on? I'm working on creating the video for the next lesson in Mom's Learning to Read lesson series. Wow. Will you be doing anything else today? Yes, I'm going to be working on my E64 lessons. Thank you, Wally. And now, we see how Jacqueline can keep the children on track with their schoolwork and still have time to get her important paperwork done. The key is the lesson plan feature of E64. Because she has designed lesson plans for each of the children, E64 will provide the instruction with very little intervention needed by a teacher. Jacqueline Smith is currently both a mother of 12 children and a grandmother of 12 grandchildren. Through her software program, she has taught hundreds of children how to read. This is one of the many areas where computer instruction can be very powerful. The three youngest of our children, who have moderate to severe special needs, require a great deal of repetition. And yet, we taught all three of them to read, while also homeschooling the other additional five children who are still at home, running an educational farm, developing and marketing a computerized curriculum, and producing a weekly television show about homeschooling. All of this would never have been possible if we'd been forced to spend hours going over flashcards and early reading books with the children. By using Jacqueline's Learning to Read program, the computer does the tedious and time-consuming repetitive work while we apply the finishing touches one-on-one. -on -one. 